Hi again, this is Andy, KU4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisper and Lesson 27 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we're going to cover the T8A questions, which goes over modulation modes. And let's jump right into it. Which of the following is a form of amplitude modulation? All right, single sideband is the form of amplitude modulation on the exam. So amplitude modulation, or AM, is, has, you can, there's different subcategories of it. So to carry information on this type of radio signal, the amplitude of the waves is modulated. So the, basically, if you're looking at the waves on a, a line, the height of the waves is modulated. This is opposed to FM, which is frequency modulated, which means the frequency or how often the waves occur is how it's modulated to carry information. So for this question, just remember that single sideband is a form of amplitude modulation. What type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions? FM is most commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions. FM or frequency modulation presents a very clean low static signal which works very well for data modes transferring information to and from computers which includes packet radio. Which type of voice modulation is most often used for long distance or weak signal contacts on the VHF and UHF bands? Alright, here's single sideband. Single sideband's abbreviation is SSB if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, the answer on the exam is SSB. So single sideband requires relatively little bandwidth and power compared to other modulation that carry voice signals, and this helps it travel farther under lower power. Which type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF and UHF voice repeaters? The answer is FM or frequency modulation. The vast majority of VHF and UHF repeaters use FM, and like I said before, it, it's a very clean, low static modulation type. And uh, the problem is it doesn't go very far, which is why, you know, repeaters use it. But um, the, primarily the most of traffic on VHF that you're going to find is FM. And the reason is it provides a very clean, low static signal. Which of the following types of emission has the narrowest bandwidth? All right, from all the answers in the exam, CW, which is also Morse code, has the lowest or the narrowest bandwidth. It has very, very small bandwidth, and you can fit a lot of ham using CW in a very small uh, part of the spectrum. So we've talked about this a little bit before. Uh, CW, as far as operating mode, uh, modes go, pretty much has the smallest bandwidth. Which sideband is normally used for 10-meter HF, VHF, and UHF signal sideband communications? All right, this one is upper sideband, or USB. So the higher frequencies, which includes 10 meters HF, VHF, and UHF frequencies, use upper sideband. Now the lower frequencies, like 40 meters, 80 meters, 160 meters, use lower sideband frequencies. And most receivers have built-in filters for all these modulations, and some will switch automatically as you tune. So for this one, upper sideband does, is used primarily on 10 meters VHF and UHF. What is the primary advantage of single sideband over FM for voice transmissions? Now, the answer on the exam is single sideband has a narrower bandwidth. FM is easier to tune and is not as susceptible to interference as single sideband. However, single sideband has a narrower bandwidth, which gives it advantages as far as power needs and the weak signal operation. So the advantage of single sideband over FM for voice transmissions is that single sideband has a narrower bandwidth. What is the approximate bandwidth of a single sideband voice signal? Well, a single sideband voice signal has a bandwidth of about 3 kilohertz. So if you're, if you're centered in on a single sideband signal, you should be able to hear that signal distorted a little bit, but you could hear it about a, a kilohertz and a half above and below the center. So 3 kilohertz is the bandwidth of a single sideband voice signal, and you just got to memorize it. What is the approximate bandwidth of a VHF repeater FM phone signal? The answer is between 10 and 15 kilohertz. And this is just an answer you're just going to need to memorize, that in, in general, a VHF repeater FM phone, phone signal, or a FM phone signal in general, will take up between 10 and 15 kilohertz. This is much bigger than sig single sideband. What this means is that if you center, you're tuning your transmitter, and you center your dial in the center of an FM VHF repeater phone signal, that 7.5 kilohertz above and 7.5 kilohertz below is going to be taken up by that signal. So this is just one to memorize, but the approximate bandwidth of a VHF repeater FM phone signal is between 10 and 15 kilohertz. 
What is the typical bandwidth of analog fast scan TV transmissions on the 70 centimeter band? Now this is roughly 6 megahertz, and that's megahertz, so really big wide bandwidth. Memorize this one too. 70 center, centimeter band fast scan TV transmissions take up to 6 megahertz of space. What is the approximate maximum bandwidth required to transmit a CW signal? Remember I said CW was small. It's 150 hertz is the bandwidth for CW. That's hertz, not kilohertz, not megahertz, 150 hertz. If you can remember that CW has the smallest bandwidth, the answer is the smallest number of hertz on the exam. So 150 hertz, CW signal. And that's it for the T8A review, and now it's time for the quiz. So number your paper from 1 to 11. When you're done with the exam, be sure to stop by handwhisper.com. You can find the answers under the exam answers page under the T8A link. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick. So if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. So let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. Which of the following is a form of amplitude modulation? A. Spread spectrum. B. Packet radio. C. Single sideband. Or D. Phase shift keying. Question 2. What type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions? A. FM, B. SSB, C. AM, or D. Spread spectrum. Question 3. Which type of voice mode is most often used for long distance weak signal contacts on the VHF and UHF bands? A. FM, B. DRM, C, S, S, B, or D, P, M. Question four. Which type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF and UHF voice repeaters? A, A, M, B, S, S, B, C, P, S, K, or D, F, M. Question five. Which of the following types of emission has the narrowest bandwidth? A, F, M, voice, B, S, S, B, voice, C, CW or D slow scan TV. Question 6. Which sideband is normally used for 10 meter HF, VHF, and UHF signal sideband communications? A upper sideband, B lower sideband, C suppressed sideband, or D inverted sideband? What is the primary advantage of single sideband over FM for voice transmissions? A single sideband signals are easier to tune. B. Single sideband signals are less susceptible to interference. C. Single sideband signals have narrower bandwidth. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 8. What is the approximate bandwidth of a single sideband voice signal? A. 1 kilohertz. B. 3 kilohertz. C. 6 kilohertz. Or D. 15 kilohertz. Question 9. What is the approximate bandwidth of a VHF repeater FM phone signal? A. Less than 500 hertz. B, about 150 kilohertz, C, between 10 and 15 kilohertz, or D, between 50 and 125 kilohertz. Question 10. What is the typical bandwidth of analog fast scan TV transmissions on the 70 centimeter band? A, more than 10 megahertz, B, about 6 megahertz, C, about 3 megahertz, or D, about 1 megahertz. Question 11. What is the approximate maximum bandwidth required to transmit a CW signal? A. 2.4 kilohertz. B. 150 hertz. C. 1000 hertz. Or D. 15 kilohertz. And that's it for lesson 27 in the T8A section. Now that you're done with the quiz, please stop by handwhisper.com and check your answers. And until next time in lesson 28, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.